Uh, great. Our next set of talks is a long block of lightning talks, and that's going to be our last block of talks for the day. Afterwards, we'll go into unconferencing. Uh, we have a lot of great topics here for these lightning talks, so I'm really excited for them. Um, feel free to you know go grab a drink of water or something if you want. Um, this has been a long block of talks, but uh, you know to maybe get a little extra time for these lightning talks, why don't we kick them off? Um, I'm going to follow Alexi's uh, structure of having the speakers introduce themselves just to save time. But our first speaker is Lee Tussman. Hello. I hope you can all hear me and see me and my slides. Um, my name is Lee Tussman. I'm an artist and an educator, a programmer. I make games. Um, I'm involved in, I'm one of the co-organizers along with a, a, a team of, of the collective that organizes at Baby Castles, a video game art space in New York. And this is a lightning talk on lower dimensional dungeons. And what do I mean by that? So this is a talk primarily dealing with roguelikes and dungeon crawlers that are less than two dimensions, AKA one dimensional. And it's an, it's an overview of the field, but it's not necessarily comprehensive. My caveat is that this is more of a sub niche than a full genre, uh, but I will describe their mechanics because I think it's worth further exploration. And then my other caveat is that I love simplicity and that I can quickly understand the underlying structure and systems of lower dimensional dungeons. So I'm an educator, I teach at a university, I teach in both new media and math and computer science. And a, lo a lot of what I do as an educator is trying to break things down to their, um, into their smaller parts, right? So um, thinking about uh, one dimensional dungeons is one way that I've been able to kind of strip down the genre and strip down procedural generation to their innermost parts and, and to help focus. Um, I wanted to say a little bit about how I first came upon this idea or this sub niche of one dimensional dungeons. This is uh, a game called Cosmic Crown. It's by Alice L of Umbrella Isle. And originally I found this on iOS, though you can now play it um, on the web on itch. And I think there's an Android package as well. And this game has beautiful graphics and I'm gonna just move ahead and hit play so you can see a little bit of what the gameplay is like. Um, in this one dimensional game, you can see you're at the bottom, you can move forward, you can move one space at a time or two, you can pause. Um, there's that lightning bolt, which is a disrupt, um, which kind of stops machinery from working. And at the end is the crown, which is basically how you descend. And the way I got into this was I was looking to play roguelikes and reading about them. I wasn't coming from a background in Dungeons and Dragons or RPGs necessarily. And I, I found the UI basically of memorizing a million key combinations or keys um, as uh, is really hard to wrap my mind around and, and, and inventory as well. And I was really attracted to this game's simplicity where it was still surprising. There were still these emergent um, gameplay mechanics. And yet I could really just kind of focus on that alone and kind of understanding the system and, and enjoying st still like, um, yeah, the kind of the emergent gameplay that happens um, and the procedural generation as well, and really being able to kind of focus on that and understand how that worked. Um, maybe you're thinking, okay, that's not ASCII. Um, you know, I, I prefer a different kind of uh, dungeon crawler. So I'm gonna jump uh, to something else. This is Corey Johnson's um, URL Hunter. And uh, it might be difficult for you to see this on your on a small screen or on YouTube or however you're watching on it if it's you know after the conference as well. But um, in this game, you're a O and there's little A's that you're hunting, for example. And it's it's in the URL bar. If you can kind of like peek your eye in closer, you'll see these A's running around. There's a timer. So this isn't this isn't uh, turn based. So it's not a it's not a roguelike, but it is one dimensional. And I think I like about working in one dimension is that it really does let you kind of upend some of the conventions of these kinds of genres and pay uh, and kind of try different kinds of experiments out. This is why I think I love that it's in the URL bar. And it reminded me a bit of this, um, of one of my favorite games, which is Robin Baumgarten's Line Wobbler, which is also not a roguelike, but it is a dungeon crawler. Um, 
your you use your controller is a uh, Dora spring that you can move forward and backwards, and uh, it's not procedurally generated or turn based. Um, each level is has been pre made, and you're controlling this green light, and you're trying to get to that flashing light at the end of each um, of each dungeon, right? Of each level of the dungeon, and you have different kinds of motion and ways to kind of attack or get through these different obstacles. It's a really beautiful, fluid game, and it's been an inspiration for me in thinking through one-dimensional dungeons. Um, and I just love how it um, how it upends kind of conventions. I also um, hope that it'll inspire people to make um, hardware roguelikes. This is going another direction. This is uh, Santiago Zapata. This one actually uh, is definitely an ASCII roguelike. Um, Santiago spoke, I think, three years ago and talking about the conventions and challenging the conventions of, of roguelikes. This, uh, this is Rogue 280, which is 200 and uh, the game was written in 280 characters. You control your our familiar at symbol, you have HP in the level, and you can see the stairs there. There are monsters, though they're invisible, and um, that's probably because he wrote the entire uh, game in just 280 characters. And he um, he updated this and made a second version. This is Rogue 280v2. Now you can see a little bit more terrain, for example. Um, the monsters are still invisible, but you can see maybe there's like tall grass that we're seeing, like with the Octothorpe. And um, there's these plus minus altars that you can pray at, I guess, just by walking onto them, which increases your HP. Um, Again, you can still hit monsters, but they're invisible. And I love, um, I love the constraint here. And I, um, you know, it's such a convention of, of roguelike developers that you're working on your games for years and years and years. And working with these kinds of constraints lets you build something much more rapidly that still can delight, that still can challenge you, and that um, lets you play with these ideas of emergence and procedural generation. This is Stutter Step by Evgeny. Petrov, this was created um, for a Ludum Dare. He actually says that it took him only a day. Um, one thing that's unique about the interface for this is that um, even though you're moving along a single horizontal dimension, like when you pick up an item and right there we see these, you know, these backslashes, which are I, some kind of like a staff. And I think the, um, the brackets are a shield. When you pick up items, they stack above your player. So you're moving along this, the two dimensions and you're picking up and attacking monsters, for example. But your your UI essentially is along this this other dimension, which I think is a really interesting um, approach. There's also tildes, which are lava. Um, the pluses are like kind of um, HP medical packs, yeah, med packs. Um, I just think it was a it's a it's a smart way of dealing with this interface and and with constraint. This is my own one dimensional roguelike. This is called One Dimensional Dungeon. The, na the, the name says it all. It's really inspired by Rogue, and I was really trying to collapse Rogue down to, down to a two-dimensional minimal constraint system. So you have you know, the kinds of monsters you're used to, bats and cockatrices and rats and hobgoblins and snakes. And um, you know, you, you're moving in the two dimensions. There's gold, there's potions that you can pick up. Uh, when you hit a toad, for example, you hallucinate, which you can see happening right now. If you um, if you get attacked by a floating eye, it it uh, renders you um, blind for a few turns, and this was really you know me trying to work within these these constraints to figure out what would it's not just a coffee break rogue like it's like an espresso break rogue like like this is a game that you can play in one to two minutes, um, maybe maybe three or four and try to get a high score try to try to work your way through the dungeon, but it also came out of me trying to like build a game without using some pre, you know, a library or some other engine, but build it from scratch myself using just my own know-how. Um, and, and, and a lot of the fun for me was in building it this way, still having a lot of delight. I still play this game a lot, um, but doing it with this kind of minimal um, constraints. You know, one of the things that was fun to build into this is I also made it so you can play along the vertical orientation. And so, for example, you know, you can hit a button to switch to the vertical, or you can choose flip-flop mode, and then each level it switches to a different orientation. Um, the next one-dimensional roguelike I made is called Hunt the Wimpus. This was inspired by the game Hunt the Wimpus. This is on a BBC Microbit microcontroller, and you have a five-by-five five LED display. 
And I programmed this in TypeScript, but also the micro bit can be, can, play, can be programmed with blocks, like a block editor. So it's kind of exciting to dovetail a little bit with what um, Kate was saying earlier today about these different tools and different progr uh, visual programming environments as well and different, different ways to, to kind of program and, and make work. So I, I created these little, it's not ASCII, but these little icons to represent you know, the player, the Wumpus or Wimpus as I call it, the, the um, slime pits and the bats that will move you around. It's a, it's a one dimensional dungeon that's in a loop. Here's the code or at least part of the code. Um, and before I go, I just wanted to mention, since a lot of um, people that are interested in roguelikes are really interested in chess, this is, you know, chess is obviously, um, you know, turn-based as well. And there's a lot, uh, there's a history of these, of chess variants. In fact, there's a book of a thousand of them. And this is a one, this is one of many one-dimensional chess variations. There's ones by um, Martin Gardner, the celebrated mathematician and, and puzzle designer. And um, so this is another a way to kind of explore constraint and um, and and uh, not procedural generation so much as emergent gameplay with um, with kind of minimal rule sets. Um, I think that's it. I'm out of time. So um, these slides and my notes are available at cutly forward slash dungeon. Um, you're welcome to message me either um, on the conference mud or you know here's my website, my Twitter and Instagram, and I'd love to see uh, further exploration of one dimensional roguelikes and procedural generation. Thanks so much. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. That was like Thank a you. whirlwind of super <laughs> objects. Uh, I definitely want to go play the URL game because I had seen pictures of it, but I've never gotten a chance to play it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Lee will be hanging out in the space. Uh, definitely. To chat with him about all these cool games. Uh, Thank you. Thanks.